Their wives love them just the way they are. He doesn't believe when I say I think he's attractive and he's my Bruce Willis. But to these men, being bald is a curse. Just the word bald, isn't that a defect? Just what causes some men to have more hair and others less, genetics. Experts say in most cases, sensitivity to the hormone DHT is the culprit. This byproduct of testosterone interacts with hair follicles causing them to shrink. The hair then thins and can fall out. Dr. Alan Bauman of Boca Raton, Florida is a hair transplant surgeon. He says a favorite myth blames baldness on genes inherited from the mother's father. The hair loss comes from the mother's side of the family and that's probably an old husband's tale. Uh, not true. We, we see that it's genetic and it comes from both sides of the family. But what kind of results will our volunteers see when they each try a different approach to growing hair? Using drugs like Propecia and Minoxidil, a laser device, or a hair transplant. Our volunteers are on a quest to get back at least some of what they've lost over the years. The Dateline hair experiment is about to begin. But first, our volunteers receive their weapons in this battle against hair loss. Richard, our twin who is single, will be taking one of the only two FDA-approved drugs to grow new hair. Next, Joe, our 54-year-old teacher, will be using a double-punch approach, taking two drugs at the same time. It's a technique some doctors believe increases the chances of growing new hair. Hector, our computer support technician, will be using an alternative nutritional product from Finland. I'm going to be taking Viviscal, which is a fish extract. Viviscal is the type of product you often see advertised on the Internet, complete with dramatic before and after photos, testimonials from people who say it grows hair, and scientific studies the company says prove it works. George, our twin who is married, will be using something totally different from everyone else, a device called the laser comb. The product emits an actual low-level laser beam that the company says safely stimulates hair follicles. Our last volunteer, Paul, who hopes to once again flip his hair like a rock star, is about to undergo the most intrusive treatment, a hair transplant. Today's hair transplants are 100% undetectable. There may be people that you know who have had hair transplantation and you are unable to tell. A year from now, 10 months from now, what will his scalp look like? Um, well, he's going to have a brand new hairline, so it's going to be a lot lower, a more youthful position, and he's going to have a hell of a lot more coverage all through the top front area. So that front half of the scalp is where we're focusing our effort today. And he wants it down to here, I think. That's what you're asking for, right, Paul? <laughs> well, we're, we're going to talk about that. But will Paul's transplants take? And will this fulfill his dream of getting back the kind of hair he once had? Will any of our men see the results they're hoping for? When we return, we check back six months later with each of our follicle five to see who is growing new hair and who is not. You may be surprised by the results. <laughs>